Welcome to UGC lecture series in computer science. We are going to see a series of lectures in the subject operating system. This is for the BSc undergraduate degree program pertaining to the students doing their fifth semester degree course and this belongs to paper number 8. In today's session we are going to see a topic on types of system. This is part of unit 1. So as a contents, we will be saying 1. Serial processing 2. Mainframe systems 3. Desktop systems 4. Multiprocessor systems 5th. Distributed systems 6th. Clustered systems 7. Real-time system 8. Handheld system and 9. Is the ubiquitous computing. Now, what is a serial processing? I suppose you would have studied in your earlier days, in, in your schooling days itself, about the evolution of computer, how the computer was in the earlier days. So, in the serial processing, wherein all your data input will be processed in a serial way, in a sequential way, that is called as a serial processing, wherein you will be having all your data will be stored in the punched cards, you might be aware of what a punched card is, which has been used for storing the input values. So, here in the, in the punch cards, it will be stored and whatever you do, all your data, all your entries has to be done only manual. That is, there will not be any sort of interaction between the user and the computer in those days. So, what the supposing if I want to enter certain input value, what I will do is, I need to go into the room first of all and then there will be a register, a register is a, uh, is a small notebook where I need to make an entry stating that uh, I am going to uh, do this kind of programming, a program on COBOL, a program on Fortran, then I need to make an entry, I need to give the login time uh, that is when I am entering and the logout time. Then I need to type my values on the punch card and I need to give it to a supervisor who will be sitting in front of the system and all the mounting and unmounting works should be done only by myself. So there will not be anyone to help me out. So myself and the supervisor will be there and he will be just he will be monitoring how I am doing. So that is the work and I have to do it. So this is a serial processing. This has been carried out in very olden days wherein we do not have a concept of operating system at all. So all these things have been uh, punched in the punch cards and it has been given as an input. So that is how it has been done. So there is no concept of operating system in those days. So this figure shows a serial computing. So here these are the punch cards and this these people are having the punch card. So this will be a supervisor and the other person. So whatever data I am going to have, it will be stored over here and it will be given. And this is the register wherein I need to mark all the entries in the register. Whatever I am going to program, whatever I am going to code about and I, am going, I need to give it to this particular person. So he in turn will insert in this area wherein it will be punched and this is how a serial processing works out. So let me read out the topics that has been there in the serial processing. One is, it has to be instructions has to be performed sequentially and it has to undergo a FIFO basis. What is a FIFO? FIFO is a first in and first out basis. So whatever you give at the first, that will be, that will get executed first and then you will get the output first. So if you are in a queue, if you are at the last, then your output will get executed only at the last. So if you are at the first, your output will get executed at the first. Then here in this punched cards are used. So jobs are firstly prepared and stored on the card. User does not interact with the system. So here mounting and unmounting has been taking place using a manual setup and manual entry has been done in the registers. This is about the serial computing. Next is an operating system. Next is a system called as a mainframe system. A mainframe system is one which has been used in those days even it is prevalent in the recent days. So, in the mainframe system, a mainframe system, it is, it is a server of servers. What does it mean? 
it is it is very big it uh, it can occupy n number of volumes of data in it and it can even work for 24 by 7 nowadays mainframe system can work for 24 by 7 and it is mainly used in the atm uh, the banking sectors and then the financial sectors nowadays and even to be frank the 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 walmart the walmart company uses this kind of uh, mainframe systems so here it mainly uses the batch system how it gets operated in those days it uses a batch system what do you mean by a batch system a batch system is one wherein you given the input that is there will be a supervisor sitting in front of a mainframe system and you are supposed to type in something in the punched cards and you need to give it to the supervisor the supervisor in turn he will you will be coding it in a language called COBOL let us consider and the second person comes in and if he is going to code in a language called Fortran third person comes in if he is going to code in a language called COBOL fourth person codes in a language called Pascal fifth person codes in a language called Fortran so there are totally there are five people out of which first and third person have, has coded in program in COBOL second and fourth second and fifth has coded in Fortran wherein the fourth person has coded in a language called Pascal. So, all the similar languages will be grouped together and it will be sent as a batch. So, it will not be you will not be getting the output immediately wherein you will be giving all the data to the supervisor. The supervisor in turn will collect it and he will keep it on the table wherein he will be uh, collecting all kind of similar set of programs and then he will be executing the similar set of programs and the working style is the program has to be submitted to the supervisor operating system will be using the load and run operation that is he will be first loading the job from the punched card and executing the instruction by using a run command so it uses a batch system so this is how a mainframe system works out even in today's environment this mainframe system is working in such a way it has been used even in the banking sectors say for example if you have if you have gone to certain banks during the working hours you will be taking certain outputs of the passbook printout or you may deposit or you may withdraw certain money from the bank wherein after the banking hours if you if you are if you happen to have a chance of going into a bank after the banking hours you can find the the particular person that is there will be the printers will be rolling out what do they do with the printer why does it roll out after the banking hours it is because in the printer it will be uh, taking the daily transaction report so what has been happened on this particular day that is an example for a batch system the other batch system example you can say it as say for example you have been uh, you are getting your university examination results and hopefully your university examination results will be receiving only by midnight 12 pm so you mean to say that the controller of the examination and, and, the, and the university authorities whomsoever it is concerned will be uh, sitting uh, in front of the system by midnight 12 o'clock and they will be releasing their uh, results definitely not so they will be scheduling in such a way that this particular program has to get executed at this particular instance of time so that kind of operation is called as a bad system so it is highly common in even in today's world so this is how a mainframe system looks in so this is a mainframe system that has been given by an IBM so IBM is not the only vendor to use this mainframe we have other vendors like HP, CDC, Honeywell so on and so forth but IBM mainframe is said to be pretty common hence we always we uh, mostly we tend to take IBM as an example company for the for handling the mainframe system but other than IBM we have other companies even so this is a this figure shows a recent mainframe system of the z10 architecture z10 is nothing but it is the name of the operating system the operating system name is z10 z denotes zero downtown zero downtime system so 10 is the version 10 so here it will be operating without any downfall at all so without any restart at all so like in order to switch on or switch off a mainframe system it usually takes three working days to switch on and switch off a mainframe system so that is the reason people don't switch on and switch it off this is one other uh, mainframe system example so the next is about a multi-program system what do you mean by a multi-program system from the name you can 
infer it as multi programmers two or more number of programs can be processed on a single processor single uni processor you will be having only one processor wherein you are going to code two or more number of programs it may get the processor may get overloaded but how the program runs in so that is called as a multi processor system it is even common in many of the uh, it has been used in the research fields in the areas like uh, in colleges in universities and in government organizations wherein with one processor you in you give an input of different program inputs and you uh, you try to get the output wherein your output may get delayed because it that uni processor gets overloaded of too many programs but even then the all your programs will be standing in a queue and you will definitely will get an output so it can execute multiple programs on the system at a time will provide the memory space to all the running and all the waiting processes input and output devices are very slow when compared to the speed of the processor because in a multi processor system the output device the input and output devices what are the output devices say for example the printer the printer types the printer gives an output very slow when compared to the speed of the processor because usually the processor speed will be measured in terms of mips what is mips mips is million instructions per second so millions of instructions per second a processor can execute so um, the when you compare the output of a printer or the printer speed with respect to the processor speed the processor speed is definitely faster when compared to the input and output devices this is an example for a multi programmed processor multi programmed system and multi programmed processor system so here the speed of processor will be in mips it allows more than one program to get executed at a single instance of time in a uni processor uni is a single processor it is used in research army education and in government organizations next is about a time sharing system a time sharing system what do you mean by a time sharing system a time sharing system uses here two or more number of inputs have been given but each member each program will be allocated a specific time so for example what happens is that us so this particular program will be given for execution only 10 seconds so this particular program will be given execution time of only 20 seconds so within the 20 seconds this has to get executed if it is not getting executed then the other program will be staying in the queue so this is called as a time sharing system wherein it uses a concept called multitasking what do you mean by multitasking two or more number of task that has been performed at a single instance of time is called as multitasking what is a multi programming two or more number of programs that has been executed on a single instance of your on a on a single processor this multi programming multitasking is two or more number of processes that has been or the task that has been performed at a single instance of time is called as multitasking so this time sharing option it yeah, it's uh, it supports the concept of multitasking so next system is the desktop system desktop system is one which we see on a day to day basis which we have it in your regular homes which we see on a day to day basis so here in this desktop system it has a concept of disk operating system desktop systems that we use it is a system that we use on a regular daily basis that we use in our homes it is nothing but it's the personal computers which we use on a day to day basis you would have seen everywhere anywhere and everywhere and with the uh, commencement of the desktop system this disk operating system came into existence disk operating system which is nothing but the dos disk operating system came into existence so what is the advantage of having a desktop system here in your desktop system the hardware cost is very less when compared to the previous mainframe system or when compared to the previous versions this hardware cost is very less and even the processing speed is much higher and you have a user friendly environment wherein here you can do an easy computation in the personal computers it is used in homes and the next system is the multi processor system so what is a multi processor system 
here in multi processor system denotes two or more amount of processors are simultaneously working as called a, at a single instance of time you call it as a multi processor system in the before few minutes we are speaking about multitasking and multi programming multitasking is two or more number of process more number of task that has been carried out at a single instance of time you call it as multitasking and multi programming is two or more number of programs that gets executed as at a single instance of time you call it as multi programming now multi processing multi processing is two or more number of processes gets into work at a single instance of time you call it as multi processing in a multi processing system what are the factors that are available here it is also called as a parallel system or it is called as a tightly coupled system why do people call it as a tightly coupled system it is because as a tightly coupled system wherein it shares memory so when you share memory you call it as a tightly coupled system and it is it uh, it has a concept of symmetric multi processing it uses flint's taxonomy what is a flint's taxonomy flint's taxonomy is one which has all these four factors one is sisd misd mimd simd sisd denotes single instruction single data set misd denotes multiple instruction single data set mimd denotes multiple instruction multiple data set simd denotes single instruction multiple data set the single instruction single data set it uses only single processor for its execution and this multiple instruction multiple data set it uses parallel processing or the multiple processors are being used for carrying out multiple set of instructions single instruction multiple data set also uses parallel processing because it has multiple data sets wherein this misd multiple instruction and single data set it is not in use till date it has been used only in the research areas then what are the advantages now let us see the advantages of a microprocessor system there are three different advantages in the microprocessor system number 1 it has increased throughput number 2 economy of scale it, that is it is scalability number 3 it has increased readability so these are the three advantages in a microprocessor system then let us move on to the next system called the distributed system in a distributed system what is a distributed system you would have heard of a distributed system in your daily life that is say for example if you are going to have and uh, if you are going for a internet shop and if you want to browse certain sites if you are going to type in the url as google.com or as yahoo.com you mean to say that or how do you get the output when you type in google.com and when you type in certain search values something like uh, some meaning if you want to find some meaning in the search if you type in you get the output within fraction of seconds something like 0.03 seconds 0.05 seconds so do you mean to say that uh, how is it possible for the google to fetch output at a very faster rate if you say that you have only it has been retrieved from the server you do you mean to say that you have only one server no all your data it's been distributed you will be having you will not be having only one server you will be having many proxy servers something like yahoo or say, say for example the yahoo mail or the gmail wherein you will be having all the proxy servers across the globe and all your data will get stored at one one server location so supposing if you are going to give an input and if you are going to wait for the result it will be hitting the first server that is located in say for example you have one server located in bangalore the other server located in noida the third server located in california fourth server located in australia so it it immediately it hits when you type in a keyword and give a search key it immediately hits the bangalore server supposing if the bangalore server is busy it goes to the noida server supposing if that is busy it goes to the us server likewise so it goes to the server and it fetches the value at the earliest so this is a concept of distributed computing all your values are been shared or are been distributed across the globe so that 
the retrieval becomes faster and efficiency increases. So, this is how in the distributed system it is loosely coupled system. Loosely coupled is each and every system it has its own memory. For you according to us when we type in the keyword and when we press and enter for us we think that we, we get the output from a single system that is our thinking. But actually what it happens it fetches the output from a different set of proxy servers from a different set of servers from a, which has been located across the globe. So, what happens here is each and every server has its own memory it is not been shared it is not a common memory it uh, one one server has one one memory. So, example is the Yahoo and the Google server and then the other distributed systems are one is the client server system the other one is the peer to peer system. What is a client server system? A client server system is one wherein you have server one server and that server has been connected with 5 or 6 different clients or in other words 10 clients gets connected to a single server. It does not mean that you need to have only one server you can even have a proxy server. The other thing is the peer to peer system the second type of system under a distributed system is a peer to peer system. What is a peer to peer system? Peer to peer from the name implies peer to peer is a point to point contact a direct communication between the server and the client is called as a peer to peer system. So, this is also a type of a distributed system then the next. So, now let us see a diagrammatic view of a distributed system. So, this is how a distributed system looks like. So, here from this area one person types in a value for a Google for a Gmail here from this locality this person types in a value for a Gmail. So, here and all you will be having the proxy servers in these locations. So, when it goes here when this server is busy it immediately goes here when this server is busy it immediately goes here and finally, it retrieves the data. So, it is more it is a more efficient system distributed system is one of the efficient system. Then we go on to a next system called as a clustered system. What do you mean by a clustered system? What is a cluster? Cluster is forming groups. So, like you have a big task say for example, you have a very big task that is to be completed within a short amount of time. So, when you have a big task, so that task gets subdivided into smaller programs and if it has been given to n number of people and finally, all your output all those output will get integrated and you get a single output that is called as a cluster system. A cluster system is one wherein you have all sort of groups. So, all sort of similar groups. So, here you have a task of doing a very big project and say for example, you have a team of 10 members and what do you do? Will you be allocating the entire project task to a single person? Definitely not. You will be splitting it into equal modules and then you will be assigning it to all the 10 people whoever has, whoever has joined that particular team, whoever is part of that particular team and then you will be getting the values from them. But all these people belong to a single team that is they belong to a single cluster. So, such a kind of system you call it as a clustered system. So, this is one other system. Then the next type of system is the real time system. What do you mean by a real time system? Why do you use a real time system? A real time system is one wherein you give the input and immediately you get a response. Say for example, you are traveling in a flight and if there is a problem in the flight the pilot what he needs to do? He needs to immediately he needs to report to the control room. So, when he is going to report to the control room about the problem that is prevalent in the flight then he should immediately get a response from the control room either he needs to land or what other options has to be followed out. So, that is what the personal, personal from the control room has to do it. Supposing if there is a delay in it then then the flight may result in a crash. So, this is a example for a real time system when he is going to shoot out an input he needs to get an immediate response that is called as a real time system. An online transaction processing 
is a real time system you go to an atm you withdraw certain money what do you do you just uh, insert your card you type in your password and you'll be prompted with a menu what needs to be done so you press a withdrawal key and you get a withdrawal screen wherein you type in 10000 so what it does internally if you have a valid input if you have sufficient amount of money it goes inside and then it will be checking for the amount details and then 10,000 rupees you will be getting it. So you give an input and you get the output. So such a kind of activity is called as a real time system. And this real time system is broadly classified into two types. One is called as a hard real time system. Other one is a soft real time system. A hard real time system is one wherein the CPU will be processing the data and as we enter the data wherein there will not be any sort of seconds left out. In the case of soft real time system the CPU performs the operation after a microsecond. So supposing you want to change something within that microsecond you can you will be allowed to change something that is called as a soft real time system. Then the next type of system is the handheld system. In a handheld system what do you mean by a handheld system? The mobile phones, the devices, the laptops, the iPads everything is said to be a handheld system okay what is the advantage of having a handheld system it is it is easily carryable it is easily portable so wherever you go you can have your uh, mobile access you can have your internet access so such a kind of system you call it as a handheld system and then the next system is nothing but the the ubiquitous system ubiquitous system is otherwise called as a pervasive system Pervasive system is also a type of handheld device wherein you will be communicated with the network. Wherever you, are, you take your handheld device, it will be communicated to the network or you will be having an internet connectivity. Wherever you go, your network follows. So that is the ubiquitous system. So now let us see a diagrammatic view of a ubiquitous system. So here in the mobile device, you have wherever you go, here you have a network adaptive transfer protocol to transfer your network views and this is how the ubiquitous system works and here it works in a mobile phone. Now let us summarize the details that we have seen in this in today's lecture. We have seen the different types of system such as mainframe system, desktop system, distributed system, multi-programming system, ubiquitous system handheld system and we have also seen the working style of all these systems. Now what are the possible questions that can arise from this particular topic? Question number one, how was the user's identity maintained in the serial processing? I said it can be maintained using registers. What is a batch system? What are the advantages of a desktop system? What is a multiprocessor system? What are distributed systems? Mention some of the handheld devices. What are the handheld devices you know? You might be mentioning it. Something like the mobile phones, iPads, so on and so forth. Ubiquitous system computing is otherwise called as pervasive computing or pervasive system. So with this, we come to an end of this particular session. In the forthcoming session, we will see more on, more topics on the subject operating systems. Thank you.